Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. We are here. It's a wacky one. It's going to be a straight... I'm just going to warn everybody right off the top. This is going to be a weird one. I'm here. Mark's here. Shelby's here. We're all here. The whole gang, the whole team. And uh, it's Saturday morning. I mean, it's cartoon time. It's fucking 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. I'm going to Maine, so I got to pre-record because they got no Wi-Fi in the whole state. And uh, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm hungover. I'm gay. We did it up last night uh, outside fucking spring break, so uh, you can't help but get tied up in the action. But I had to kick the lady out, and uh, it's you know 5 a.m. I got bedhead. I got a I got a morning wood. It's just, this is tough. Well, I appreciate you doing it, making it work here. Uh, this is it's gonna be a strange run because like the old days. Hey, is that that's an old mug? Oh yeah. Isn't it weird to think that we're going to have old faces? Yes. Like you're yes. going to have like a ball bag neck and like your eye, there'll be that weird pink droop under your eye where you can see like <laughs> the eye gook. Yeah. I you mean, know? you're going to, you're going to go into a restaurant and a young kid is going to help you like, Oh sir, hold on. Let me get the door for you. Like, isn't that insane? And that's best case scenario, by the way. Right. Right. That's if we're lucky. Holy hell. Then you're going to, trouble getting off the shitter you're gonna have food dribbling down your face and a napkin tucked into your shirt not Ooh. to mention the doctor's appointments you, those people go to the doctor three four times a day oh god I, I hate all it all day and a big pouch of pills there'll be yes. 900 pills and you just you don't even know you just dump them all in and eat them like fruit loops right right and then some old this some kid comes up and goes sir I used to watch you when I was when I was four, you know, and you're like, oh, thank you, thank you, and you're like some old geezer, like comedy legend, like from the Catskills, and he's like, I watched you with my dad. He's dead now. Yeah, that's got to be strange, and uh, and again, this is all best case scenario, but maybe, maybe, hopefully, it becomes we innovate. It'll be this kind of thing where, you know, eventually there's a pill to knock out wrinkles and, and, a, and a drink that knocks out herpes and, uh, you know, yeah. a syringe that knocks out your mother, whatever it is. Hopefully we get some innovation. You hope, but, I mean, we can't cure baldness and uh, the people have, you have to die. I mean, it's, it's the cycle of jizz. It has to happen. Well, death doesn't seem so bad as the fuck the aging, the not being right. able to walk. Everything hurts. You can't take a piss. Death right. is, as Peter Sellers said, death is easy. Comedy is hard. Ooh, he wasn't wrong about that. Yeah, he's very talented. He's good. You know what else is easy is uh, talking about your problems on stage. Comedy is tough. That that you talk about your problem and get a chuckle, I'll high five you. But just talking about your problems. That's easy. What do you mean? Just oh, just saying, hey, I'm, I'm whatever. I, I realize I'm sitting next to a spotlight. I'm gonna plug in my spotlight. It's gonna change this whole situation. You got a spotlight at home? Who oh. needs the Who needs this, the comedy club? I'm trying to reach over here and keep my headphones in. So what do you All mean? Right. You just talk about the problem, like the people that are just going, hey, hey, here's my my dad beat me, and uh, I'm bi curious, and that's my act. I see. Well, they think they're doing jokes, don't they? I don't know. I think they think that the the opening up and the 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 letting you in and the vulnerability equals quality or talent or entertainment. Oh, Ooh. baby, is that a oh. bong? Up? I see a bong on your uh, cabinet there. A bong? No, it's a giraffe piggy bank. Ah, close. Look at this thing, huh? Oh wow. shit! I just knocked it over. Oh, oh that didn't sound. Was that a ring light? That's a ring light. I knocked it over. The tripod fell off. Oh, oh. Jesus, H. Anal Christ. Nuva Fuck ring. Me. Holy hell, look at that. All right. Sorry. Wow, this is like an action episode. There's things happening, crashing. You got special <laughs> effects. Great show, crashing. Yes, movie. Crash. Um, but anyways, yeah, the, 
There's those people that are trying to do that shit, I guess. But some people pull it off. Some people talk about their problems with the punchlines. True, yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty that, good. That's maybe the most impressive comedy. This is way too bright. Yeah, I got you got a ring in your eyeball there. You look like, uh, look at that. It's like kooky pupil. I look like the Roger Rabbit bad guy. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> What's his name? Christopher Lloyd's character. The, the Goop. The Mr. Goop? That doesn't oh, the sound goop, right. The Goop that, was the name of the uh, the miscarriage placenta that was in that bucket. The Goop is the uh, bad guy in Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah. All Woo. right. Well, I apologize for that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it was technically not correct. Yeah, it was close. Yeah. Um, I mean, you right. yell, hey, goop, at somebody. It's not going to It's not gonna go well. He didn't say the different letter. It's not going to go well. I think goop is uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's menstruation line or whatever it is, or candle wax. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, go- it's called goop. I think that's the name of her production company or sweatshop or whatever it is. Well, I'd like to have some goop sex. Sure. <laughs> What's the difference? Is there a difference between orgy, gangbang, group sex? That's all in the same container, right? It's all very similar. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think it's group sex. I think is like the the African American to black because orgy's got a little stink on it. You know, it's got some some stigma and some schmegma. Uh, orgy's like orgy mustache guy with a hairy chest and a couple of chains and some oils. And then group sex is like, group sex, we're all together. So gangbang then, but this analogy must be like the N-word. There's a fucking yes. gangbang. Gangbang's bad news. Run a train, bad news. That that almost feels like it's like one lady with nine dudes. And gangbangers is, uh, you know, yes, a term. That I never got. I was like, that sounds too weird. These gangbangers out in South Central. I was like, that sounds too dirty. Just, are they a gang? Just call them a gang. Why are they ba- gang banging? Well, they're banging. Like, just like, uh, you know, I think that's an old verb, verbiage of being in a gang. Like, remember George with the Van Buren boys? It was when I was banging. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another post Gang bang. David. Yeah, that so they're banging. One. The gangs are like banging. Banging our generation knows as a term of sex. I'm yes. banging her. But I think right. back in the day, it was, we're banging. We're, we're running around, robbing and stealing and cutting and slicing. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I wonder if there's other words, because they all keep changing. Like, uh, like I remember hearing older guys say, like, oh, I gave her head to a woman. Yeah, I've said that. I think we had this debate in like 2014, way back wow. when. Wow, you got a real glossary up there, Fatty. <laughs> you can you can really ro- go through that Rolodex. Well, because I'm giving my head. I'm using my head. We both have heads. She's got a head. You got a head. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I never thought about the whole head. You know, the forehead, the ears, the placenta, or a patella, or the chin. That's all head. Yeah, I get right in there. I mean. I'm giving her head because I've used nose and I get my eye in there. I try to look up into the uh, cunt. The birth canal, yes. Why not? The BC. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Giving here's, head. Here's one I heard the other day. Colin Quinn, if I may name drop, he was talking about someone being acting crazy and he said, oh, that guy's cracking up. Mm. Now, I haven't heard that meaning cuckoo in years. Right. We, we think of it as laughing so hard. Oh, we, I think we talked about this already. Uh-oh. Shit, this was on a queef. But well, cracking up, right. cracking up to us was hilarious. I'm cracking up laughing. Right. But it, it stemmed from cracking up, I'm going crazy. Well, all the crazies turn into, he, he's a del, uh, hilarious, what is it, um... Like hilarity, not hilarity. Uh, Delirium, delirious. Delirious, which is a Eddie Murphy special, but hysteria, like, oh, it was hysterical. Hysteria, yes. hysterical. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, it's it's all comes from, like, crazy, which is, maybe it shows how fucked up and dark things were back then. Like, if a guy was like, ah, you're like, he's going crazy. That's a great point, because I remember watching The Godfather for the first time back in 1994 or whatever, yeah, and at the end, you know, uh, uh, what's her toes? The the sister, Carlo's wife. There, what the fuck's her name? I'll think of it in a second. I know who you're talking. I know Adrian, the, the actress. From, yes, from Rocky. She's going crazy and, and spitting on him and going nuts. And he's like, 
She's hysterical. Right. And I remember like being confused by that because hysterical meant hilarious to me. Exactly. Connie, Connie Corleone. Connie. And, and he's like, she's hysterical. But I remember being like, hysterical. She's, she's, this is very dramatic. Right. But right. back in the, in the 40s, hysterical meant cuckoo. Well, I think the ladies were kind of, they were under your thumb a little bit back then. You know, they couldn't really break free. They couldn't really be themselves. And also the dudes were all buttoned up, hat, three-piece suit. I think it was pretty rare to get to get cut loose, you know, and have a real laughing fit. I got to I gotta tell you about this shit. So I've been watching. I was up till like 4 in the morning last night watching this shit on YouTube. Have you seen these videos of like 1922 Paris, digitized, like remastered, and they put color in it, and it, it's some guy with a camera from the 18-whatever is filming the streets of Paris or Amsterdam or New York or London. They're fascinating. I saw one of New York a while back. It was like New York and the something like that, similar. Yeah. You get a tear in your eye, and it's just like, that guy had a life, she was ugly, this kid's gay. Like, there's all these little, you just think, like, these were all people with thoughts, and they're all dead. Yeah, it's uh, it's strange. I always think that when I go to cemeteries on the road, I walk around and just look at look at all these things, and I like to think about all these people would give anything to switch places with me. Anything, anything. I mean, the one guy had cancer, or he had a bad leg, or he was uh, schizophrenic, and he would still like as much as we we talk about life being a bummer, you you still want to be in it. You still want to play the game. Oh, certainly, and and that's the thing about. Death, it's the great equalizer. If somebody was like, you're terminally ill, we just found a lump in your tits, you're going to die on next Wednesday, every single thing you were complaining about would be absolutely nothing. Right, right, exactly. Like, we're yeah. like, I got to get up and do this pod. If someone was like, you're dying in three weeks, or if they were like, podcasts are banned in a country, you'd be like, oh my God, for God's sakes, let me do this podcast. Let me get yes. up, I'll do it at six. I mean, how, I, fig- I feel like we've talked about this, but how many, how much did it blow your mind that first time you heard the, uh, you don't have to do a podcast, you get to do it, and you're like, ah, wow, I wasn't ready for that one. Right, well, that, but it's hard to keep that perspective because, I mean, last night or two nights ago, i got to throw them off the scent here, one, one night in the recent past, yeah. I had to do a show, and it was one of these shows where you're on the whole time, it's two and a half hours long, and you're like, well, this is a little much. This is insane. Yes. But if I had three lumps in my balls, I'd be like, I'd do anything to be on a four-hour show with, with a bunch of people that aren't laughing. They're just staring at you, and the whole thing sucks. Completely, completely, yes. I'm with you, Fatty, and uh, we're lucky to be alive is the point. We're lucky to have each other. We're lucky to have the pod. And when some bad shit goes down in your life, you really do, it makes you t- put perspective like, man, I, uh, I farted at that, at that funeral, everybody made fun of me, that was the worst thing I've ever done, and you go, I, I would kill for that fart, the fart's nothing, we're all going to die one day. Yeah, uh, and speaking of gratitude, I, I got to tell you, I told you a little off camera, but I just took, uh, we're going to lose some people here because some people are squeamish, I just took the greatest shit I think anyone's ever taken. <laughs> Anyone that's taken a shit that they believe to be the best shit has probably taken a photo, if you're like me. Sure. If you got a photo of a shit, I'm going to put this shit against your photo. This is a be- I'm laying down the gauntlet to every Ooh, Tuesday who's ever wait. photographed a dump. I got one here. I sent it to Bobby and Ari. I mean, they're texting me a lot here. Now, I don't know. I got que- Is this a pro- impressive shit? Is this a, 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 a gross shit? Is this a large? What, what, what's the uh, parameters here? Why are we so blown away? No such thing as a gross shit, if you ask me. They're all wow. delightful. No, I'm kidding, I don't know about that. I'm kidding, of course. But this shit is impressive. It's long. It's good. I mean, it's up out of the water. I mean, half of it. Wow. It, it wouldn't drown if I left it there. That's, I'll just wow. say that. It's nostrils and lungs are up out of the water. And then the other end of it, I don't even know if it exists. It's just, it's like deep, the depths of which this thing is in the toilet. It all just came out. It slid out. Now, Ari Shafir and Robert Kelly and Derek Donovan Walsh have all seen it. Because I, wow. t- I can send it to you if you'd like to take a peek yes, at this thing. Yes, yes, please. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm not on the, the shit list. All right. Well, I'll send it right now. I took two because I put my finger down in the water to give it scale. 
Easy, fatty. You don't want to be touching that Corona dong. Shelby, do you want a copy of this? Because I can send it your way too. He doesn't. I I can answer for him. He doesn't like this kind of stuff. But uh, no, 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 no. Shelby's got his own problems going on. He doesn't need a big turd coming into his uh, sprint. <laughs> All right, um, it's, it's, it's being sent, and uh, if you want, when I wiped, it left a big streak across my ass cheek. I got photos of that, too. I sent those to Derek. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, did I lose you? No, no, I'm just uh, I'm nervous about this thing. Oh, uh, did it come through? Uh, up, 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 up. Let me know when you get that puppy. I mean, this is, this is dead air, so I'm getting a little worried. Still, oh, yeah, still nothing, still nothing. All right, give it time. Um, I mean, it's photos, and it's got to go from the Queens to the village, so. And, and it's a big turd, so it takes a long time to process. <laughs> Holy <laughs> good Lord. Wow, that is unreal. And it has a little a sidecar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my well, Lord. I had, to, I had to break a piece off and put it next to it because <laughs> it was still in my ass. I had to give it a, a swoopy wiggle. Like, I just gave it a little... Yeah, like a hip thrust to snap off the end of it. It's like an iceberg, you know? Like, the only the tip is out, but it goes deep under the water. I, maybe you need some more water in that bowl there, sloppy jalopy, because <laughs> this thing is, uh, I mean, it's it's half of it's in the Bronx. It's down I deep mean, in the in the hole. Oh, make no mistake. I mean, we got full tank of water. That's just a huge shit. Woo. I mean, y- you see the one with my finger in there, right? Oh, unfortunately. D- did you... Was this painful? Was this was this like a, you know, some shit you're like, if I don't get this out of me now, I have to quit the business? Or, like, was it was it a, a, an emergency? I'll take question. you through. We're watching, you know, every Saturday morning, Sarah and I get up. We watch real time on demand, and uh, it's a nice little tradition. I go for a run. I get a couple bagels for the gang. We sit down in front of the old tube. We watch real time. And I said, hey, I got I to gotta put a pause on this. I'm really starting to percolate here. Because I think the combo of every day I have the huge green spinach, banana, blueberry, almond milk, and it, I make these huge ones, tons of greens. Yeah. I've been meditating like a son of a bitch. I've been running every day, and I think it all just built up in there. And I just felt it felt like you had to. Sh- I had to shit, and okay. then slowly as time went on, I was like, I really got to shit. And then finally we got to a stage. It was, you know, phase four of reopening. Sure. I was like, I got to pause this. <laughs> Threw a pause on. Then I stopped, started talking. I was standing and talking because I had a couple of thoughts about the program. Yeah. And then I said, you know what? This has got to wait. This thing is really ready. And I think in that time it stacked up like a skyscraper. Wow. And then when I sat down, it just right out just slid right out and i knew it was it was impressed i knew it was a special one i i stood yeah. up and there she was i mean i mean you should hold it up like a fish photo it's such a beauty <laughs> like you got to stand next to that thing and i feel like you might have cured if you had a disease i feel like you got it out whatever that was there's a lot of toxins in there that were not supposed to be in your body you might have gotten silent re cured <laughs> It was like a life extendo. I'd put it under glass if I could. If it was socially yes. acceptable, I'd hang it above my bed here. I'd take down this dumb <laughs> church that I didn't go to right. and hang it like a like a gun rack. I mean, the yes. thing is two feet long. I know. you got to mount this thing, stuff it, and put the sunglasses on it like a moose. That is really something. I mean, call in if you if you want a private screening. I, I, I don't even know. You need a wide lens. I, I had to... I had to project this onto my Apple TV here, but Jesus, that is really sad. Kudos. I mean, maybe we'll, tough. Maybe we'll put it on the Patreon. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at it. This thing is, I mean, on the other side of this phone, I'm not going to flip it because we'll get kicked off of YouTube again. Sure. But on the other side of this phone is the, the wildest shit, and it's top to bottom, and you can only see about half this thing. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like the Loch Ness. It just keeps <laughs> going. It's coming out of the, the piping. It's uh, You laid pipe. I mean, Shelby's texting me. You can't put it on the Patreon. <laughs> I mean, but whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll DM you. I mean, send me a private message, and uh, don't you know, send me yours, because other people's shit makes me throw up. You know what we should do is hire a, like a sketch artist and get a rendering, just like an accurate one, just so the, the people want to know. That's a good idea. I mean, I could have my nephew color this thing. <laughs> it's it's uh, wild. I mean, it looks like, and with the side piece, 
It looks like a, a baseball bat making contact with a nice big green softball. That's good. That's a good call. Yeah, it's uh, that that kind of wholesomes it up a bit. Yeah. But uh, that's a real Louisville, and uh, <laughs> holy hell, yeah, I feel a little emasculated because my shits are, are wet and wild and not not that strong. Yeah, this is this is special. This is a once in a once in a long time. It's like a moon yeah. or one of the moons. You know those special moons that come. Yes. Yes, I, I feel like if I was in the woods, I'd go, "Hey, a walking stick." That's how uh, that's how long and and secure and solid it looks. Wild! It's like Robert Duvall's career, just long, and just when you think it's gonna end, <laughs> wow, another one. <laughs> yeah, it, that shit keeps its head above water. Um, uh, right. Anyway, well, we better move on, ladies. Yeah. T- tune back in, ladies. The yes. poop talk is over. Uh, well, they poop too. You know, we all poop. Uh, everybody shits, as the book says. Everybody poops sometimes. All right. You ever get uh, into REM? Huh? You ever get into REM? I think they've got some amazing songs, and then some songs make me cringe with how weird and and awkward they are. Yeah, I think um, I think like the generation before us, people a little bit older than us. I understand that they helped give birth to the alternative, but by the yeah. time I was banging, that was that was gay. It was well, gay. But I think they're good. I think they're a talented, quality band. But it just uh, some of it gets a little too whiny. Yes. What's the frequency? Can at the. Bu- 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 oh, I love that song. And yeah, there's some good ones, but a uh, little bit. Hey, but I'm in on the moon. Yeah. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. good stuff. Don't get me wrong, but. They're, they're solid, but they just, they're just one of those bands that's just up and out. They go, they left. The guy lost his hair, and he just, just gave up. Well, what can you do? Anywho, all right, well, you, you got some stuff here. I mean, I want to hear some business. I got some nuggets. Uh, well, first, I'm going to tease this and then maybe say, save it for the end. But uh, I went, I had a few drinks with the lady last night with the girlfriend and went to, I said, fuck it, I'm loose, I'm with it, I'm hip. And I went to this restaurant where I knew the guy worked who got accosted by the gang of, of roving teenagers on bicycles. Oh, the guy works, there. not the black guy with the white hair, but the actual holding the phone in the air guy. Yes, yes, the big white guy works there, and I've seen him. I, I'm telling you, I walk around the village like it's uh, the 40s. I got nothing going on, and I just run into everybody. I know all my neighbors. I, I'm buying real estate, and I, I'm the guy now who just walks down the street and there's a plaque on a building. I read the plaque. Oh, nice. That's a good guy to be. Yeah, that, that's how much time I have. I found the friend's apartment, you know, from friend's. Oh, is that in the village? Uh, that's like two blocks from me. I'll show you next time you pop in. I always assumed it was on the Upper West or Upper East because they oh, lived no. near the Central Perk. Yeah, that was all made up. That was Photoshop. Uh, Chandler's not real. But and in the they, show, do they live in the village? Yes. No kidding. Yeah, which makes sense because they're like young and good looking and they're living in New York. You know, it makes sense. I thought they were just rich Upper West Sidey people because the Central Perk you think of as being a Central Park. They lived up there, I just assume, but I never got that into the program because it stunk. Not a great program, not a great show. People compare it to Seinfeld, which is uh, pretty, pretty horrific and sacrilegious. But hey, I die gay. Uh, so I go in there. I'll, I'll save it, but I, I got the answer. Oh, my God. I've been dying to hear. We've been waiting a week. Uh, people have been <laughs> waiting a week on fainted tits to hear yeah. this thing. Um, but here's another little nugget. So there's a park by my house that has like a bocce ball court, a soccer field, uh, a playground, a couple of like handball, you know, one of those like sporty little parks, not like a, not like a Washington square, but like this is an activity park. I got you. And, uh, so I'm sitting there, we go to a a restaurant, they say it's going to be a 30 minute wait. And I say, well, let's go sit in the park, watch some soccer, watch some handball, watch some, some hobos shit in their hands. And she goes, great. We're sitting there drinking. And we're just talking about, you know, uh, who knows, Thomas Jefferson, fucking slaves, or whatever it was. And we look over, and there's like a group of kids, you know, 15, 14, rap scallions, and it's a bunch of girls. And she's like, look at this. And one of them just cold cocks one. Now they're fighting. I'm talking full-on melee with like eight kids. 
all women, and there's one guy just going, hey, hey, uh, hey, easy, ladies. And they're all fighting each other, and then the dust clears. My girlfriend's like, we got to get out of here. This is crazy. And uh, I was like, we got to watch this. She's like, we got to get out of here. We, we So we're walking away, but I keep looking back, and they're just – Holding each other's hair and pulling hair like a cartoon. Just hair Jesus. pull, hair pull, bent over. It was insane. That's what's scary about the ladies fighting or anyone with long hair because that hair pulling is vicious. You can just vicious. rip the neck and the scalp yes. and those chunks come out. And yes. And did, you can hold it forever. I mean, these girls, we we watched for a couple of minutes and they, it never, they never shook. It was just hair holding. Leaning over, like, I'm not letting go till you let go kind of thing. They might have been like that for three days. I mean, it's a good move because if you pull the hair, they bring the head with it because no one wants their hair ripped out. Right, right. So you can manipulate where they are. You pull that head, the person's going to come with the hair because they want to keep their hair. You get some uppercut action going on, but the thing is, if you pull hair, they're pulling hair, so now you're both cocked over and you're both uh, fucked, but... It was it was the weirdest fight because you know when a fight breaks out it's like blah, blah, you know it's all it was quiet it was a quiet fight interesting that not a scream not a peep not a yell and I mean it was I mean these gals could throw down it was uh fucking hands baby swinging wow you don't see a lot of quiet I don't know I've ever heard of a quiet fight I mean that's amazing it was almost as if they knew like we're in this nice area we got to throw down. It was like all business. Like, I'm just going to try to hurt you. I'm not going to make a scene here. It, it, it felt like this is not the first uh, melee they've had. And interesting, was there, was there any sign or clue as to what started the fight or what it was about? No idea. Of course, we start doing the, uh, the, the math. Like, maybe it was over a guy. And, I mean, it just, like a light switch, on, now it's on. It was sitting down quietly, bullshitting, and then it was on. Don't you love a fight? What's great about those events, especially in a relationship, and especially during like a quarantine, is you're like, yes, something to talk about for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, Because you get to be like, did you see that one girl? I saw this girl. What about that move when she did that? That reminds me of this fight. Like, you're just praying for anything to just explode into a conversation. Because I'm out over here. I I got no stories left. I got, I've told her all my business. Yep, it's, yep. it's we're just in real time now. We're just waiting for something to happen to talk about. Because otherwise, it's just no, no. I know, I know. You said that you in fifth grade. Your dad touched you and right. you winked at your father. Whatever. Well, it's it's also a catch forty eight because you want something juicy and interesting to happen, salacious, but you also don't want bad stuff. So it's it's the best is when something else is happening to a person that's horrible and it's not you and you have no connection. Oh, absolutely. That's all, that's all you want. I mean, that's all of TV and even the news. For and the YouTube. most part, all of this shit that's happening is happening to somebody else, pretty much. And that's why it's fun. It's, what is that, a schadenfreude and, uh, you know, all that shit where you're just like, that guy got hit by a bus. Fascinating. Glad it's not me, but pretty cool. Yeah, it's always strange, especially those things that are so rare that you're like, yeah, that's never going to happen. But it does happen to that one person. Somebody yeah. dealt with that. I know. And that could be you one day, which is scary. Like, you're going to live so many minutes on the planet, and there's cars whizzing by. That guy's got a gun. He's he's a crazy person. You're going to bump into him at some point. Yeah, very, very strange. And, uh, yeah, horrific things are going to happen to all of us. And it's weird. It's weird. It's tough. Boy, we're getting real. Uh, we're digging deep on this one with the philosophy and the lifespan and living and people and jizz. Existential. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. But yeah, I, it, it's so funny because you talk to the lady. She's like a cute gal from the suburbs of Massachusetts. And she's like, I've never, I've grown up with girls my whole life. I've never swung at one. None of them have ever swung at me. Like it just shows it's such a, it's an upbringing, it's a culture, it's it's a whole different world for some people. Yeah, I always feel like fights are pretty avoidable. Yeah, and don't solve... I, I get it, we've all been angry, we've all had a quick twitch, you just gut reaction, but uh, it doesn't seem to help anything, usually. No, it's there's a, there's a disconnect there, and it's, it's, not, it's not great. I, I remember even as a as a youth being in college and you'd see these big 
white guys with like the swoopy hair that went over their forehead and like a yellow button down tucked into some shorts with a woven belt and dockers on or whatever the hell sperry shoes and they would just wail on each other and i was like are you gay are you are, were you beaten as a kid what is coming out of you right now what is this anger yeah it's some kind of parental mishap something was lacking in that upbringing i think there's a disconnect yeah and they must have, it's learned behavior they must have their dad probably beat the shit out of them and they're like i'm going to inflict pain on somebody else so they find somebody they can fight with I guess so, but it would. I felt like it happened every weekend. So you're like, are there that many dads uh, railing on, on little Timmy? Oh, there's bad dads everywhere. Of course. I, I mean, I guess so. We had that in my town. In middle school, there was a fight. At least one fight a week, minimum, yeah. minimum, yeah. a couple fights. And did you have it? It spread like COVID. It was like if there was one fight, there'd be four fights. Usually, we had days right. where it was like nine fights because. At the fight, everyone gets hyped up and, and ready. How about we fight? You fight. Yeah. It would just yeah. keep breaking into fights. Sometimes for like 90 minutes, you'd watch just fight. It was like a fucking pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? Did you have this one? Uh, I got into a few scuffles in my day. And it's a it's a little kid move that you can't carry into adulthood, which is you fight, you fight, your brain's out, your hair's fucked up, you're covered in dirt, your knuckles are bleeding, and then you just start weeping. Immediately. Oh, yeah. You remember that one? Ah, yeah. And then you're like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, because you're hurting. I mean, that's yes. why you're fighting. It's because your fucking dumb dad, you know, stuck his dick in your ass when you were nine. And so now you just beat up a kid that you kind of like. And then right. you're either beat up so you feel shamed or you beat someone up so you feel ashamed of that. And then you're like, What are we doing? I don't even believe in any of this. That's yeah. every fight, physical or verbal. You yeah. end the fight and you're like, I like you. What am I doing? I don't want to be this guy. Ah, uh, I remember I got into a scuffle with this white trash guy, Tyler. He was like a foot taller than me. Big, tall, blonde, scary guy. Tyler. And I wailed on this guy, and it, he pushed me away, and he could he could handle me. I mean, he was way bigger than me. And he goes, what are you doing? Like, And I had this moment like, what am I doing? And I just burst out into tears like a fucking Oscar winner. <laughs> um, yeah, it's problematic i mean I, I told the story before but i fought my best pal of fifth grade jeff Meehan, and we just started talking what would happen if we fought like george and jerry and then yeah. next thing you know i was committed to a fight i mean it's like i was like oh <laughs> fuck and it was time and of course he had an older brother so he was like i could tell right away by his stance he knew what he was doing yeah and uh, i tried to kick him you know like i was like oh, I'll, I'll kick him because i just watched point break the day before and sure so i tried to kick him and he like caught my foot and i was like give it back come on and yeah. uh, that he swung away, and then I remember he took like a, a right hook and just caught me in the temple with his. Oh. And it's funny to think about because looking back, his hand was probably the size of my dick on a winter day. Sure, just, but he caught me in that temple, and I went, and my eyes watered, and I was like, "All right, you win. That's it." <laughs> and there was like a whole crowd, and they were so disappointed because the whole school was in a circle. Oh. And then we went back to being best friends like immediately. All right, well, that's nice. Like, All right, you can beat me up, and, uh, you know, I know more about baseball. Let's move on with our lives. Right, right. It's it's a kooky time, but here's the clinker. Do you think, because people are people, we're all common eggs, we're all jizz and ovaries, do you think that's still in people, and no one contacts anymore, no one talks, no one has a conversation Maybe that comes out with the canceling and with the, uh, the I want to hurt you. I think it's just online now. Oh, 100%. It's the exact same feeling and emotion and disconnect of like, I'm going to ruin you. And that's that's the same feeling as like, I'm going to punch you in the face until you're bleeding and crying. I mean, right. it's the exact same thing. It's just now more uh, acceptable. It's It's just part of the culture now, which is strange. But yeah, it's definitely uh, a disconnect and a lack of empathy in a lot of ways yeah totally and i think uh that i've noticed that if people say you know we've we've put ourselves out there with with youtube videos and tv and whatnot and this and then when somebody says something mean if i favored it they tend to go ah, i didn't think you'd ever see this i hate myself and you're like all right whatever oh 100 percent. yeah i've done that a lot where i write back and i'm like that's really hurtful you seem like a sad person they're like well i'm actually a fan dude yeah 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 what is that it i guess it takes some some strength to be nice being nice is way harder uh it shouldn't i don't be. think so but yeah it shouldn't be hey here's one thing that we can all agree on though can i just say this please sheath 
Underwear. Ooh. That's something everybody can get on board with. Nobody's mad at Sheath. These guys are the best in the business. Let me just minimize my poop picture and uh, pull up some information on, on Sheath. You got it on. Let me see what right I now. got. I got right no now. underwear on right now. Oh, geez, wear a mask. But I was wearing sheath underwear earlier, and you know it. I, I ran in this stuff the other day. It's good for running. It really does keep your uh, twigs and berries separated, as they say. Oh, yeah. This guy that runs the company, he's a fan of the show. This is one of those ones I don't even need a copy. I guess I need for the promo, which is Tuesdays. But uh, sheath underwear is killer. It's got a sexy design, and it's soft and nylon-y. It feels good. And I say it every time. My wife is just like, that's ah, hot. You look sexy in this yes. underwear. It's like a wrestling singlet, you know? Yes. It, it's, it's I'm getting comfy. turned on. It's comfy, and you put your dick in this little hole, and it does it automatically. It's not like you have yes. to like cram yes. it in there. It just goes in there. It's a pleasure to pull it out, and it keeps your dick and balls separated. I think I have a nicer smelling dick and balls at the end of the day because of she. Yeah, I agree. It's, I smelled it, and it tastes it, better. It's really killer. Don't you hate when you go for a walk and your dick and balls are loudly clanking against one another? Well, sheath underwear cradles your junk like a mama gorilla holding her precious newborn baby. There we go. I feel silly even reading this business yeah. because... We're telling you the real deal. We wear it every day. This is our go-to underwear. G give, them, give them the goods. Tell them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Obviously, I'm wearing it right now. It's the best. I put on other, like, you know, Hanes or whatever the fuck they are, you know, old school dog shit primitive boxers the other day. I kept plopping out of a hole. Then the, the dick hits the zipper, and it shows a little kid, and, it, it, you know, you sit down, everything's coming out of the sides. This is a nice support system. It nestles. It nussles. It's a it's a beautiful thing, and once you do it, you can't go back. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS. This guy's a fan. To get 20% off your first order, and Sheath Underwear's 100% money-back guarantee. Wow, that's pretty good. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Support the show by supporting them. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls and i'll just add this i mentioned it before but he sent some stuff to sarah and i and sarah's got a sheath sports bra Ooh. and some like booty shorts and they're sexy and she likes them so all the lady fans or the dude fans that want to get their lady a gift get her a nice sheath sports bra yes or uh or all the women of fans of the show who we love you're worth 10 of these bros because yes. there's only 11 of you total uh get yourself some sheath Panties. All right, and then I gotta say, if you're gonna if you're gonna have the sexy underwear, you're gonna be you're gonna need to be ready to throw it down, folks. So keep that hog at uh, beck and call with the nice blue chew, the first chewable dick pill. While we're stuck at home, what's something we could all use a little more of? Human contact. You got that right. But also some sweet, sweet. Love making. How brutal would that be? You're at home quarantining with your gal or your guy or whatever it is, and you can't get it going. We've all been there. Don't take that risk. We it's, Times are too tense to not be able to plow your partner. So get a blue chew and harden up, and uh, I love them. I keep one in a, in a drawer just in case I'm having a, a rough week. And uh, it works instantly. It tastes pretty good, and you're you're ready to go, and it lasts, baby. Yeah, same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Right now, we have a special deal for our listeners. Visit Blue Chew. That's b l u e c h e w dot com, and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code Tuesdays. With a D, just pay five dollars shipping. That's it, five bucks. Again, that's B L U E Chew C H E W dot com. Promo code Tuesdays to try it free. Tuesdays with a D. Bluechew dot com. Finally, a website that can give you an erection. It's the best pill, folks. I've tried a few, and this one is really good. So get on it and have fun. Live your life. Yeah, and then you get a nice hard on bursting through your sheath underwear, and all's all's well that ends well. Oh yeah! All right, all right. Hey, good stuff. Uh, well, should I should I drop the hammer or uh, should we 
You got anything? Drop the hammer, and then we'll we'll swing through. I mean, I got a couple things. I mean, I, timing it weird. I'm going to a little backyard cookout thing today. So oh, nice. I don't know if I'll have anything from it. You know, I'm in my mind. I'm like, oh, I got that thing, but I'm, it's happening after the recording. Right. But I'll tell right. you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the hit of the party. You know why? With that shit pick. <laughs> no, I'd never bring that into mixed company. This is oh, okay. These, these people are on the straight and narrow. These ah, folks, I they don't want to see a poop photo. But I've eaten. I got. We got sent a huge fucking treasure chest of Antoine's cookies. I've eaten about nine of them, but there's still like six left because he really loaded them up. So yeah, I'm showing up with one chocolate chip from Antoine's for everybody. Jeez. And I'm going to be a, a smash hit. So what happened? Your, your tits fell off or what? I wanted to uh, show the cookies, and I pulled them out of my fridge, and the, the, the pickles fell. This is a big bag of Antoine's right here. I, this is treasure. This is the gold with the pirate's booty. I mean, you got them in the fridge, which is kooky, if you ask me. I'm just too scared they're going to go south or something. I, they're, I, they're worth too much. Chocolate chip kooky. Um, yeah, same here. I got I to gotta go and distribute them because these things are so good and so addictive that I'm eating like 48 a day and my reflux, forget about it. Say, well, apparently they're helping your boom booms because that thing was straight as an arrow. Yeah, so I, I'm going to that thing and uh, yeah, I saw Vitor the other day. He's a parent, our friend Gary Vitor, who's one of the most referenced uh, comedians on the show. Yeah. We yeah, never not- have him on, but... Not doing, yeah, he had a kid, and uh, he's about four foot one, so uh, I'm excited. And the, the, the wife is not large either, so I'm excited to see how that kid turns out size-wise. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, he's already as tall as Gary, so. Right, right. Um, but yeah, I've been bumping into him and just, you know, plugging along, heading up to Maine, camping on Sunday, seeing the family Monday through Friday or whatever. Woo! Maybe. Well, maybe I'll bail early if I have to, but uh, trying to trying to live a nice life out here with uh, adjusting. You, we, we adjust and you you move on. Yeah, good, good. You adjust, you make it work, and you you live your jizz. Yeah, I uh, I can't wait to hear about that camping. You've been camping six times this month. You're like, uh, uh, what's that guy, Lumberjack Johnson? Henry Who's a David camping Thoreau? guy? Hey, that works. Walden. Yeah. Who else uh, is a camping guy? Uh, uh, Kung Fu? No. Who camps? Uh, oh, Davy Crockett, maybe. Oh, yeah. King of the Wild Frontier. By the way, I've been watching a lo- uh, Alone. You ever seen Alone? I don't think so. Is that a show? It's a show on Netflix where they put 10 people on a, on a crazy piece of land in Alaska. I'm talking tundra, ice, bears, the whole thing. And they just go, you get to bring like five items. So you get a hatchet, a bow and arrow, a dildo, whatever it is. And then they got to just outlast, whoever lasts the longest wins. Ah, oh, this has been a lot of shows like that. I mean, in the pandemic, you watch it and you're like, all right, we, it's not so bad. I got Wi-Fi. I got, uh, you know, my lady. I got Antoine's. Here's the thing that's weird, though. I, we're in show business, sort of. Not really. Sure. But I didn't know you were allowed to just pitch the same show. Like, mm. isn't that the same as Survivor, Naked and Afraid, Alone, fucking Boobly Boo? I don't watch too much TV, but it seems like there's 50 of these shows. We drop you off in the middle of nowhere. You got to blow your dad and find the helicopter. I mean, yeah. isn't this all the Amazing Race? Aren't they all the same fucking show? Well, I mean, that's how showbiz is. You, you tweak it just a nipple hair, and it's a whole different ball game. You know, like Survivor is they give you activities and they say, hey, we got a camera crew right here. Uh, You got to build a shelter and uh, eat out a dog and all that. But this is just literally, this is the most, and naked and afraid, these people are not naked. So, like, there's there's a little tweak, and these people are the most fucked out of all of them. Like, this is the real deal. You're in the woods with zero shit. You got to make your house. You got to make your caca or whatever it is. But... And... They're more fucked than the naked people? Yeah, the naked more people. more fucked than naked? They're on the beach. They're attractive. They're, uh, they, they only have to last like 10 days or something. Like, how long can we make it? <clears throat> These people are like, we have to live out here till the other guy dies. Oh, wow. And I always think, too, the crew's right there where it doesn't yes. it feel like you can be like, all right, hey, I, I got to borrow your gaffing tape because uh, I, I stepped on a squirrel or whatever. I think about that all the time, but... It's so funny because you watched like 
Roberto, and he's crying every night. He can't catch a squirrel. He's, he's eating ants. He's freaking out. He can't catch a fish. And then you watch Gregory, and he makes it look. He kills a moose, skins it right there. Then a wolverine tries to steal his moose meat. He kills the wolverine. Oh, Greg sucks. He's crazy. He's crazy. He he, he lived with the uh, Native Americans in Serbia, and he was like a uh, uh, special forces and all this and. I mean, you just compare it to what you can do, and the whole thing's the whole thing's a bummer. But it, you, give it a watch; it's pretty intense. Uh, I can't watch a reality show because All I've right. been on a reality show. I can't because I know once you're on a show, you know that they're like this. Hey, let's get a shot of let's do a shot of you sad about your right. wife. Right. Let's get, we got to get another shot of you just walking by. Just walk by. It's all fake. I agree. I agree. But this, I'm just saying, I don't like that shit either. We've both been on Last Comic Standing. It's a kick in the balls. But this feels the most legit. But that's all I'll say. Okay. I always just think they need coverage. So, like, we missed that. Could you, right. kill, the, could you kill the rat again or whatever? Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm over here. I'm balls deep in Ozark over here. Yeah, good to have you. Now, I'm enjoying it, but I got to say that thing Uh-oh. Uh-oh. that makes me hate TV drama. Here we it go. It keeps seeping in. Here with the seeping. Bateman's so good that it keeps me watching, and it's clever, and it's fun. But there's all these little moments where, like, I'm only five episodes in, but, like, the little 19-year-old girl with the blonde hair. Yes. She's not, yeah, the, the one that's, like, a white trash chick, but he hires her or whatever. Oh, oh, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, she's great in this movie called The Assistant, by the way, that I loved. I talked about that way back when. She's a hell of an actor. Yeah, she's got range. She's very good. She's but very good. There's that scene that always happens in TV drama where she's running the strip club, and it's like a Saturday night. It's packed, and somebody goes, well, because your dad, and she punches the lady out. This little girl just punches a woman. She's like mm. knocked out. And she goes, anyone else got anything to say about my dad? And all ah. the everyone stops. They can somehow hear her yelling in a strip club. Right, right. Like this, this teenage girl who's four feet high can yell over all the music, all the bar talk, all everything. Everyone hears her. They're all like, ooh, they're afraid of her. And yeah. no, no guy at the bar is like, fucking fight, yeah, fuck uh-huh. you. Like, nobody's behaving. At one scene, there's a guy robbing a... Uh, bodega and there's like 20 people in the bodega and you can look at the extras and they're literally looking at a can of peanuts like this hmm <laughs> like there's one guy he's holding up two different bags of chips like should i get this bet it's just like there's uh-huh. shit you watch that you're like oh yuck that's so fake and stupid right little things like that that i'm like oh i have to just forge through and ignore yes. the ridiculousness and the bad extras and yes. the cheese dick writing of like this hot, rich 19-year-old's like going to this trailer park to hang out with this guy where you're like, that does not happen. Hot, rich people aren't like, I like this mysterious, acne, white trash guy who's reading yeah. alien books to me. That kid is ugly. He's got a wacky face. Wacky face. And then the FBI agents are blowing each other. I'm like, that's a little on the nose, it feels like. But whatever. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. But... but- it takes me, all my strength to get through that shit. I hear you. Well, you're an observant guy. You, you catch everything, and most people don't. Most people never never saw the chip chip uh, comparison guy. You know, I you hate catch the chip that. comparison guy. I know that guy's in uh, San Diego right now, going, "That's me, I'm the fucking chip guy." <laughs> so, but here's the thing: this is the problem with TV, and this is the problem no one will ever understand. I'm out uh, at the park the other day, and I see seventy or seven gals wailing on each other quietly and i run away i feel like if somebody saw that on tv they'd go why was that fight so quiet that's bad directing da, da, da. and you're like that's what happened sometimes it's hard to see it because it's uh, we're so trained by tv like it's supposed to go like this you know like imagine if people took a piss every time they took a piss on tv it wouldn't it would be bad tv i think you have to morph it a little bit like charlie chaplin fun fact he did a as a goof, he did a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest, and he got third. He got third in the Charlie Chaplin. He's Charlie Chaplin. So I think oh, that wow. tells you that, like, we've trained ourselves to see how things are on TV, so when they're not exactly like we think they'll be in real life, we, we tune out. But sometimes real life is fucked. Now, this Charlie Chapman thing, 
tells me that people are stupid and non-observant, and they just accept the fact that there's 25 people in a bodega. Nobody goes into a bodega like that. You go in, you're like, I'm going to go get chips. You get your chips, you leave. But things like, I think we're saying the same thing, I guess, uh-huh. maybe. I don't know. But the TV, this is where like movies, some movies, again, like we talk about like a perfect film like Goodfellas, yes. where it shows Tommy telling a story and everyone's laughing. Everyone's listening like this guy's right. crazy. And right. they're reacting in a way that makes sense. They're listening and they're laughing as opposed to a woman that's a teenage girl that can just yell loud enough for everyone to hear. I've been in a strip club. You can't hear the person next to you. Sure, sure. Um, I agree. I and agree. all those things of like, it's just so cliched of like, if anyone talks about her dad, she knocks him out. And even right. the men are afraid of this teenage woman. Right, right. Well, what is she, the Langleys or whatever? They, they, she's got to they establish that they're like trashy and they're, they're, they're violent. Right. But I do enjoy the show. It's fun. It's interesting. It's just those things. And the same thing happens in movies that aren't, that aren't you know, uh, thoughtful and meticulous. Yes. Meanwhile, I'm rewatching 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I'm like, this is the best movie ever made. <laughs> it's funny because most people watch it, they can't get through it. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you got a, a hell of a palette there, Fatty. And uh, I think it's. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm gonna drop the hammer on this this guy. You better. We're running out of time here. Yeah, get get to the get to the goods. Give it to me. I've been well, dying. Let me talk in TV. Let me do a little recap like Netflix does, where I give you a four second intro here. Uh, uh, so basically, saw a guy on the street on the sidewalk holding a cell phone and like uh, nine guys on bikes traveling next to him going give me the phone give me the phone and he's going nope nope and then they get to the intersection he's in the middle of the street and they're literally circling him and tapping him on the back where he keeps turning and he's the guy's going i'll give you the money give me the phone i'll give you the money just give me the phone and he's going nope nope i'm calling the police nope too late and then the cops come everybody scatters they talk to the fat white guy that's where we're at right okay so i I knew that this guy owned a restaurant in my neighborhood, so as I said, had a couple of uh, highballs, got some liquid courage, went to the restaurant. I see the guy, and he's like a celebrity now. I'm like, there he is. That's the guy. And I'm too scared of him because this guy's hes uh, he can handle himself. He's a big guy. He owns a restaurant in New York City. He's probably from Brooklyn or something. You don't know what these guys, sometimes you go up to a guy and you go, hey, what the hell happened out there? He goes, hey, fuck you, it's none of your business. And you're like, ah, I'm sorry. You know, so who knows what could happen? So I go into the restaurant and I see a waiter just like doing the checks at the little computer thing. And I go, hey, man, I got a weird question for you. This is going to be weird. And I'm really preparing and prepping this guy. And he goes, any question, I'll give you a weird answer. You know, he's fun. And I go, Saw a bit of a thing last night. Just want to make sure everybody's okay. You know, trying to fake concern a little bit. Sure. And he goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, that thing with uh, Robbie or whatever. Yeah, that was that was that was nothing." And I go, "Is everything all right?" He goes, "Yeah." And you ready? Can you guess? Well, so far it sounds like he's trying to downplay. He's going to give you the explanation. Is that what I'm guessing? Yes. All right. Well, I mean, I guessed last week of what the situation was. I don't like that this guy's downplaying. That little makes me think, Yeah, I don't like a I don't like a downplay cuz then the the uh, the the answer might not be as juicy. Right. So and who's this guy? This guy He works there. He works at the restaurant where the incident happened. No, no, he works at the restaurant where the big guy own he owns it. I got you. Okay. I'm going to say Boy, I mean, I still think my guest last week was pretty good when they came good. up and they took a video and they, you know, yeah, drooped him or they did something to him and he took that video away and said, fuck you. Yes, yes. So here's the clinker. And I still have a few questions, but maybe we can fill in the gaps with your, uh, with your huge shit here. But apparently the guy saying, I'll give you money, give me my phone back, ate at the restaurant Dined and dashed. So the big guy said, fuck you. I'm going through hell. It's quarantine. My restaurant's been closed. I'm broke. I can't afford to have you eating here and then not paying. So he yanked the phone from the kid. Wow. And said, you better pay me. This is like street justice. Like, fuck the cops. You're going to pay me because I have your phone now, motherfucker. And that, I saw them like, 
eight block, eh, six blocks away. So that means they had trailed him that long. Now, I don't know why there was nine of them, but I think it just kind of like got some uh, some dust kicked up, and they were like, let's follow this guy. This is getting crazy. And uh, it never got violent, never got heated, really, to, to fist the cuffs, but that's how far that guy had walked, and that's how far they'd followed him until it came to a head in front of me, and they called the police. I'm so confused. I thought it was kids on bikes. It was. The kids on the bikes ate at the restaurant? I think the one guy ate there with the phone guy. Hey, give him my phone back. That guy ate there. He might have been a little older, but the other guys were like 19 at the oldest. Oh, I see, because we're going from kids to guys. So when I hear kids, <laughs> I'm thinking 13, 12. Ah, when no, I hear I'm guys, I'm thinking you and me. Late teens. I still call that kids. I'm, I'm 71. Okay, so these are kids slash guys. So the kids and the guys are the same. Guys and dolls. We're interweaving kids and guys. Yes, which is dangerous territory, according to Epstein. But yeah, yeah, this is... <laughs> or Spacey or whoever, but... Yeah, the, the the one guy with the phone seemed like he was might have been 22, 21. Sounds like, sounds like he's a guy and the rest are kids. Is that correct? A little bit, but I, I'm sure there was a 15. I'm sure there was a 19. I'm sure there was a 16. I'm sure there was a 20. I think it was a sprinkle. Okay, so a sprinkle of guys and kids... Guys um, and kids. <laughs> Horrible so, Broadway show. So, all right. So, one of them ate at the restaurant, or possibly several of them. We're not sure. They might have scooped up some extra kids and guys. Yes. There was a scooping of some kind, because I don't know where he picked <laughs> these uh, these little little uh, nincompoops up, but he had them. So, they chew and screw. We called that a chew and screw back in uh, my day, back when I, I was like bagging. That. Yeah, so they, not... They, Dine and Dash was ours, sorry. Oh, Dine and Dash, Chew and Screw. So they chew, they screw, they dine, they dash. He catches them and rips the phone out of the hand and says, this is my collateral, you son of a bitch. Yeah, which, again, I got I to gotta hand it to this guy because, you know, uh, this is a little, I don't want to speak out of, out of queef here, but this is a white tablecloth, fine dining place. You'd think the guy would be a little, a little precious, you know, and he was like, no, no, no. Payback's a bitch, motherfucker. We're, we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. You took some from me. I'm taking some from you. It wasn't just like, Mom, I'm calling the police, sir. It was like, I'm handling this myself, which I respect. Well, yeah, well, nowadays you can lose your business for calling the police. Yes, exactly. You, you call the police, they throw your poster up on the wall and say, look at this piece of shit who calls the police when people steal from them. Exactto mundo, fatty. strange times. So, yeah, I thought it was a Karen situation with a filming, but no, he was just wanted his uh, bill paid, and he was going to get it done crook, cook, or goop. Now, you said you have some questions still. What are your questions, Lincoln? My, my questions are, where did this gaggle of uh, tweens come from? Where did they get in there? Yeah, the kids and guys mixed and ganged up, but maybe maybe he called in for backup. Maybe he said... Hey, get all the boys down here. We got to go fight a restaurant owner. I think maybe that was it, but I, I got to, again, this guy was so uh, brave. I mean, they're circling him, and I think a normal guy or your average Joe would have been like, all right, here's the phone. Just leave me alone. Because that's, that's a rough moment. I mean, that's like circling the wagons. That goes back to the West. Right. I love those people that are just like, I don't care. This is what, yeah. this is my stance, this is what I'm doing. Pretty yes. impressive. And I, I don't look. I don't want to paint pictures, but I walk by this restaurant every day. It's in my. It's on my route. And this guy is out there with a laptop. He's trying to make deliveries. He's trying to make takeout. He's just trying to stay afloat. You know, these rents out here are, are anal. And uh, so I think he's like, this is the last straw. Like I've been going through hell. You're not gonna fuck me. Wow. Well, good for him. I I, I appreciate that guy. And uh, he didn't get the police involved because Lord knows what happens when the police get involved. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, he didn't. Uh, he kept his cool, it felt like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brave cat. I think the whole time he's going, these are kids. Fuck them. He was like me. He looked at them like, like little boys. And right. he was like, what are they going to beat me up? I'm a, I'm a 90 year old man here. Or, or he's probably 55 or 50. Well, good for you for doing some investigating journalism. You got in there and you got the scoop. Oh, shit. I got another scoop. I'll save. I'll save. I got a big... This is a different story. Oh, a scoop tease. Big scoop tease. 
All right, that's good. I love a scoop tease and um, scoop this, doggy dog. This is interesting because I'm going away. Like we're, the people are hearing this, you know, weekly, but we had to record early, so I'm gonna have to wait three weeks for the scoop tease. So oh, Shelby, right. remind us of this scoop tease for when we record again. Yes, please, please, and uh, I'll be in Wisconsin and Grand Rapids and a couple days if they still stand. And uh, yeah, get the Patri, uh, queef it up. Yeah, north of the Mason Dixon seems to be okay. It seems like. Yeah, yeah. So tell a friend, check the website, hit us up, go gay, and uh, yeah, you got yeah. you got some stuff. Join the Patreon. Uh, my I got no dates, but uh, check out. You can check out Mindful Metal Jacket. That's my other podcast where I'm interviewing comics and talking about their anxieties and stuff. And check that out. It's getting some nice reviews. And um, the special they're, they're talking August maybe. Mm. So we got to All wait right. on the special a little bit, but that's only three weeks away, maybe. So I don't have a date just yet, but probably around then. And uh, join the Patreon. We got a lot of stuff on there, queefs and uh, OnlyFans. We got to do that later, at some point. Oh, let's do it. We'll figure that out later on. But uh, yeah, go to OnlyFans.com/slash/Tuesdays. Join the Patreon, and uh, you know, take care of each other. Be nice. Yes. God love you. Praise Allah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>